Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer and I'm talking about my blog today that it was just posted November 27th, 2018. It's 45 of the most fun and amazing Christmas traditions in the world. I could have gotten that backwards. But anyway, a lot of you, rather than reading the blog, you like to watch some of the details on a video. So here it is. Um, even though I posted 45 different traditions that you can pick and choose from to do for your family at Christmas time, I'm only going to talk about about 12 probably 12 of some of my favorites, but of those 45 that are on there, we've done them all as a family. And uh, try them out, just try and, you know, different ones, pick and choose which ones that will fit with your family and fit in with your traditions that you currently have and go for it. Let me tell you a little bit about the importance of traditions. In, 19, in the 1980s, I actually read a study that was done about the importance of traditions. Researchers brought in groups of people, they talked to them individually, they asked them two questions. The first question was, what did you get for Christmas last year? It was interesting because most of the participants, they kind of looked at them quizzically and it's like, oh my gosh, what did they get? What did they get? What did they get? They tried to go back into the recesses of their mind and they couldn't remember. A lot of them just shrugged their shoulders and said, well, I think I got some money. But then they asked them the second question. And the second question was, tell us about the traditions you celebrated last year for Christmas. Well, everybody's faces, they all lit up, smiles spread out on their faces, and they started recounting all the different fun and amazing tr Christmas traditions that they had celebrated. That's the power of traditions. That's why we need traditions. Now, I remember years ago, I was asked to lecture on Christmas traditions, and so um, I asked them for the names of some of the participants because I wanted to bring in and include some of the traditions that they used in their homes. I remember one woman, when I asked her, she said, we don't have any traditions. And I wanted to say, you gotta be kidding. So I said, well, what about the traditions that you celebrated when you were a little girl? She said, there were no traditions. And I said, well, what about your husband? She says, we don't celebrate those. So I thought, how sad uh, that for your kids and for you as an adult, everyone needs traditions. Now, there's one thing, too, is we all look at way too many movies and Christmas cards, and they all show the perfect nostalgic Christmas. So we all want one of those. So if you do, think about this. If you look back on some of the traditions that your ancestors did, you'll find that they were a lot more simple than what we do today. And yes, in order to make the season bright for everybody, including moms, you may have to simplify. Don't just make it one more holiday where there's more food, more people, more gifts, more stress. Think about things that you can let go of. Think about things that the whole family can be involved with and helping. That too can become a tradition. Maybe you want to simplify like your ancestors did and just do, they did simple parties. There was only one gift exchanged. They did dances. It was not the types of extravaganzas that we do today. So keep those in mind, and here are some of the traditions that you may want to think about. I categorize them by times in the month. So the very first of the month, of course, every child loves an advent calendar. Okay, and there's all different kinds, but we had what was called Mr. Goody. And we started Mr. Goody in 1979, and the reason I say that is because a lot of the things that we did with Mr. Goody are the same things with Elf on the Shelf. But if anybody was copying, copying it's Elf on the Shelf. And I've done a ton of lecturing about all of these subjects across the U.S. So I wouldn't be surprised if the owners were sitting there and thinking, hmm, we could really capitalize on this. But Mr. Goody's the same thing. What I did is I got an Anna Lee elf, and I, for the very first time, when we started in 1979, I wrapped up the elf, I got a cookie jar that was in the shape of a, a little gingerbread house, wrapped that up, and it came via mail. And the kids opened it up, and there was a card in there, and it talked about, and I only had a baby and a two-year-old at that time, it talked about Mr. Goody, that Mr. Goody was going to spend the month during the month of December, from December 1st through December, through December 24th, and each day he would leave a little treat in their stockings, and there were these little tiny miniature stockings that I got. Now, Mr. Goody also was a little mischievous, and you also had to find Mr. Goody. So we've been doing that tradition. And if you want to do something a little bit different from Elf on the Shelf, then get one of the Anna Lee Elves and start and create one of your own unique family traditions. Call it something else besides Elf on the Shelf or Mr. Goody. Come up with your own uh, interesting name. Another thing that's really fun to start on the 1st of December is buy flannel sheets, Christmas flannel sheets for 
everybody's bed in the house. There's nothing like cuddling up to those flannel sheets in winter and feeling the immediate warmth of the flannel sheet. Those are fun. I mentioned advent calendars, and we kind of used Mr. Goody as an advent calendar, but he was more of a treat thing. So you know about advent calendars, you know the ones that you can buy that have all the little doors and they open each one of these little windows each day and so forth. And sometimes they're attached to treats. But here's a couple of other ideas you may want to try. You can get those cute little paper bags, the little small paper bags in all different colors at Michael's and Joanne's. Um, you can get the cellophane bags, you can put some treats in there, you can wrap them up and you can put a number on them. And then you can put them either in a suitcase or you can put them in like a really cute Christmas box, you know, all those zillions of kinds that they have out there. We called ours Christmas or Advent in a Christmas box, okay? So the kids got, they had their own individual little Advent calendar that I purchased. But then I put together this and I put the numbers on it and they, I, we filled uh, the uh, Christmas box with them and then they would have to go through, rummage through, and they'd have to find the correct number. Now this one they kind of rotated. They didn't get a treat every day like they were getting from Mr. Goody. Out of that one, they were pulling out one date per day. So that's another way. Just think of different things that will go best with your family. Of course, we all we started reading Christmas books on day one, too, and I already gave a whole entire blog on Christmas books, so I'm not going to go into that. I think it's fun to go to some kind of celebration, like a Christmas carol, the musical A Christmas Carol, or the play A Christmas Carol, or The Nutcracker, or something like that. But make it a yearly tradition. In our family, we did A Christmas Carol. It was in the Glendale Center Theater in Glendale, California. And we had to drive away, so we pretty much made it a whole entire day. And we got up there, we watched a Christmas carol. It was the same exact play year after year, so our kids had pretty much memorized a lot of the lines. But we had a great time. It was super fun. We loved it, and as they got older, then, you know, the way back was we had to travel another hour and a half back. So we would talk about what was your favorite part? Who was your favorite character? Let's talk about Ebenezer Scrooge. What things did he learn from all the different ghosts? Okay, another thing that's kind of fun is having a tree in each one of your children's bedrooms. Now, you can do a real one or you can buy a little fake one. Buy an inexpensive one, preferably after Christmas, and have them decorate it and have a string of lights for them. There's nothing like snuggling up to your Christmas sheets, listening to Christmas music, and seeing your Christmas, uh, Christmas tree in your room lit. It's just very magical and just bring, kind of brings Christmas into their bedroom, and it's a fun, it's a fun one. Now, we all know that the reason for the season is Christ's birth. So I'm sure most of you have a nativity set. Make that a really special time when you take out the nativity set and you're setting up in your home wherever you set it up. As you take out each figure that belongs to the nativity, talk about it. What role did this particular uh, character play? Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, the, the sheep, the camels, the donkeys. Each single figure played an important part. And talk about that. Talk about the reason for the season. Talk about the baby Jesus. You can also reenact this again on Christmas Eve. If you have a special family night, you can get inexpensive costumes or even make them. You know, basically, you know, a few bathrobes. And uh, create and enact the whole nativity scene. Okay, um, now the 12 days of Christmas, I've already talked about that and in another blog, but let me kind of flip-flop it a bit. Another thing that you can do with the 12 days of Christmas is do it for your own family. Plan from December 13th through December 24th a certain simple activity that you're going to do together as a family leading up to the big day of, the, of December 24th. Okay, if you have a Santa in your area that you could hire and have him come every year to see your children. We did that, and it was great. It was the same Santa who came year after year after year. The kids got to know him. They knew the sound of his voice. They really felt, this is the real Santa. There really is a Santa Claus. And of course, in our family, we always celebrated the meaning and the symbolism of Santa, which is the symbolism and the meaning of giving and the importance of giving. So that was a fun tradition. If you like to carol and your family is good at singing, then by all means go Christmas caroling. But you can also stay in your house and keep warm and you can do telephone caroling. If you have relatives that are out of state and they're far away, have everybody gather around your cell phone or your landline and sing carols to relatives or friends that are far away. I think a lot of people set up a Christmas puzzle on a card table 
you know, one of those massive, huge Christmas uh, puzzles. You can leave that up during the month of December. And whenever anybody has any time, they can go over there and they can put a few pieces together on that Christmas puzzle. Some people celebrate um, and they make a birthday cake for Jesus. Now, that was not something that we did in our home, but our hus my husband, um, they did that in their home every year and they did it on December 24th. You don't have to do it on December 24th, but basically what you're doing is you're making a white cake symbolizing the purity of the Savior. You're doing red frosting uh, symbolizing his sacrifice. And you are, it's, it rises, you explain to your children, the cake rises just as the resurrection Christ rising from the dead. Now, you also get little trinkets and toys and you put that into the batter. And then on Christmas Day or wherever you, where, whenever you choose to eat it, when you cut the slices, the idea, of course, every child wants to get some of the trinkets that are in there. So depending on how many kids you have, you may want a packet full of lots of those. Really fun thing that I'm sure most of you have done is Christmas pajamas. And we started with Christmas pajamas on December 1st, and we wore them throughout, uh, throughout the month. We also, when we first started, I got them on the 24th, and they wore them on the 25th, the 20th, or the 24th, the 25th, and so on and so forth throughout the year. That's just a fun thing. And, you know, you can take matching pictures, and it's a fabulous Kodak moment. Um, you can do Christmas, uh, special things at, on Christmas Eve. You can have a special Christmas Eve dinner. I've actually given you three different tra traditions from other countries. Next year I'm going to go in more to other countries and the things that they do. But I've given a tradition from France, a tradition from Poland, and one from Iceland. So go and look at those. A couple of those are things that you could actually do on Christmas Eve to make it a really special occasion. But I also suggest, and I've said this in other uh, blogs, you know, read Polar Express. Um, have a special family night when you're talking about the birth of the Savior. Do a very special dinner. Maybe you want to do raclette. Maybe you want to do fondue. Whatever it is, do the same thing year after year. Don't cook the same foods every single week or month. Save all those foods that you make for Christmas and Christmas Eve. Save those just for those holidays. Now, let me leave with you probably our very, very favorite tra tradition. And this was a tradition that my friend Judy Van Wee told me probably back in 1979 as well. And what you do is you take a string and you have a string for each one of your children and make it a whole ball of string because you're going to need it for each child. You attach it to the tree and then you wind that string, have your husband or you both wind the string all of the, all over the house upstairs downstairs outside in the garage in the attic in the car all the different places and it eventually leads to their best gift or their favorite gift or their special gift or whatever you want to call it sometimes we had the gift in the dryer sitting there in the dryer so the child when they come down there's also a letter from santa that is attached to the tree and their string they carefully take their string off and they have to wind it around all over the house to their special gift. Your kids will love this. It will become their favorite Christmas tradition. Yes, you have to do it on Christmas Eve. Yes, I already know how exhausted you are. I've been there, done that. Still, I'm still there. But it is a super fun one. One last little bonus tip to end with, and that's this. When you're taking down all the Christmas decorations, it's kind of, you know... Christmas is somewhat of a letdown. It's sad to put all those Christmas decorations away. So underneath your Christmas tree, get a really cute Christmas mug and fill it with your family's very favorite candy. You may even want to include maybe some tickets to a movie or some fun thing that you want to go to. And so when everybody's taking down all of the Christmas decorations, they are still in awe and in surprise to find that mug underneath the tree for one last little remembrance of Christmas. I hope you love and enjoy this holiday as much as I do. I hope you enjoy the blog. Please, please, please comment in the section so I and share some of the traditions that you do in your family that are particularly special and memorable, things that you have passed down maybe from generation to generation that your kids love as well. The best thing about traditions is sharing the traditions so that we can all enjoy and participate in the fun. Thanks so much.